This is Vernon Wells, and you're listening to the Timo and Ali Show. And remember one thing, if you've seen my movie, you know that I know where you live, and if you're not listening, I'm going to come and get you. Welcome to the Tim Owen Harley Show. Thank you for listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. I am Tim O. Over there is my partner in mind crime, Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben Folk Hero Harley. That's my man. All right. That's my dude. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Tim O. Yeah. How you doing you know, this week, buddy? I'm doing okay, buddy. I'm a little tired still. A little but, tired. you know, we're, man, these fall sports, you know, you can take your football, Tim O, mm-hmm. and you can just. Watch it, okay? <laughs> Just watch it. I don't, yeah. No, um, yeah, we've been doing some uh, uh, some football stuff and other things. But yeah, nice. pretty busy over here at the shop. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to hear yeah. you. I guess I'm not going to hear you besmirch hockey when you're doing hockey jerseys, though, are you? Uh, no, Homer. probably. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is what I did. I, I, I pulled a swerve. I actually made these, did this football stuff so I could make some money to buy hockey equipment. Uh, uh, see how I did that? <laughs> see how I did that? I did. I saw that right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Mr. So. Ben Harley, we have show 420, man. Ooh, far <laughs> out. Hey, yeah. man, this is show 420. <laughs> For, hey, I don't remember it? who yeah. it's for, man. Uh, yeah. It's 25, 64. Right? Yeah. Right. So big for a show, 420. And uh, uh, and uh, I am a, I'll, I'll put myself. Can you uh, believe that? <laughs> I, no, I can't actually. But I'll put myself in that. We were celebrating the 420. Uh, yeah. I don't make it much of a, uh, a, a uh, secret that uh, I back the adult use, the uh, yeah. legalization of adult use and taxation. To help uh, some of our uh, governmental things that we need to have funded, instead of squeezing the taxpayer out of their paycheck, why not Wait. let some dudes who want to smoke a joint, man? <laughs> yeah, let them chip Wait, in, so, eh? Oh, what are you, a hippie or something? Well, are you a communist? <laughs> yeah, yeah no shit. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so big show four twenty. Uh, yeah, buddy, we're excited awesome. about that, and uh, yeah, I am too. Let's yeah. see here. A couple things, Mr. Ben Harley, uh, before we get the show rolling here. First of all, yeah. we have forgotten while we were yeah. on the show to Awful. pay a little tribute uh, to somebody who both of us enjoy very much. How, the, However, I think that you would probably be on top of me as far as celebration of this man's life. Yes. Mr. Burt Reynolds had passed away in the last month, and we never did have a yeah. chance to say anything, Mr. Ben Harley. And now's your time. Now we get yeah, the Ben. Very, yeah, yeah. I'm very, very mad at myself, Tim. Yeah. I was very upset. And actually, you even reminded me. I did. And I had full intentions of speaking about Burt Reynolds. Yeah, um, I was sad about his passing. Yeah. You know, I know he'd been sick and things like that. And, geez, Tim, the older we get, the more of these guys that we grew up liking and things have, you know, they're, they're, they're passing on. Yeah. You know? and, and for Burt Reynolds, that guy had a great run. Yeah. Uh, awesome run. And, and what I like too is Burt Reynolds had a second run, mm-hmm. maybe right, if mm-hmm. you want to call it that. A little bit. I'd yeah. like to look at it as one full run, but yeah. you know, uh, he he was able to kind of uh, in the later years still uh, do some good poignant movies, I guess, or whatever. Which I don't. To me, I, that's not what I'm worried about <laughs> by right. any means. I just like Burt Reynolds for him. I thought he's the type of guy. You know, there's only for me very few guys like him that could. You know, when the guy's on camera, it's just, you know, yeah. I mean, the, the guy, is, the camera likes that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. plus, he just had a very, a certain spirit or quality about him and his acting that was good, too. Right. Um, and, you know, I love, love Smokey and the Bandit. I loved Hooper. There's many other films of his that we could talk about. Uh, the Longest Yard was probably one that really, well, <laughs> Deliverance, we'll put Deliverance in there too as far as a shock factor. Right. You want to talk about shocking when you first saw it. But I, well, I'd say when 
when I first saw The Longest Yard, I was shocked, shocked right. by that film, especially the first 10 minutes of that movie. Right. For a young kid to see that stuff, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, hardcore things that go on in the first, yeah, 15 minutes of that movie. Yeah. And, and, and beyond that, too. But there, it becomes somewhat, there's some comedy in it as well, but there's no comedy in the beginning at all. Right. You know? Uh, and you know he's smacking girls around and police and pushing cars and rivers and stuff and it's just wow yeah for, especially for a young kid but I tell you what I, I like that movie and I like Burt Reynolds and uh, yeah sad for his passing but man what a good run and uh, it will always uh, his stuff will live on forever well right and I think that he um, oh he was a much tougher guy. And yeah. people who are more aware of his later 70s Hal Needham movies and things like Cannonball Run and stuff like that. Because um, I was at I was helping Danny Hicks at a at a Wizard World up up in up in Chicago and the whole Evil Dead crew was there again. And Burt Reynolds was there. And I yeah. remember, I so think I even texted, yeah, yeah, I even texted you like, yeah. oh my God, I'm sitting, because I was literally sitting like five feet away from Burt Reynolds yeah. in the green room. Uh, Angie and I were with, with Cassie and Danny and all that. We're sitting back there. And, uh, but, you know, he just looked, it, it wasn't, part of it was that it looked old, that he, yeah. he looked old. But the other part was <coughs> he, he looked, looked depressed. And I sure. think he looked depressed because his body had really broken down. I'm not sure how sick he was as opposed to, his body broken down. I didn't ask. Yeah. I don't know. I'm no expert on his health. I didn't pay attention. I know he had passed. I'm not surprised after seeing him, but I did sure. sort of over here a little bit. Um, Danny and Bruce Campbell, because Bruce Campbell kind of knows him. And and okay. he had even said, he, he goes, if you want to go to a man cave, you go yeah. to Burt Reynolds' man cave. That's a man cave. And I got a funny <laughs> feeling that Bruce, K Bruce Campbell might have a nice man cave himself, <laughs> but he sure. was impressed with... Uh, with Burt Reynolds' man cave. Now he hasn't seen my man attic. You know, no, I got a hell of a man nice. attic. So yeah, we'll have to, do, you know, I'm telling yeah. you now. But uh, but he said a lot of it to do with that. You know, he did that. He was a big college football star. And he did a lot of his own stunts. Yeah, and he beat his body up. I mean, just beat yeah. his body up over the years. And um, it's like a wrestler, living, like a wrestler or a too. football player. <laughs> You know yeah, what I mean? I mean, exactly. they beat their bodies up, and people say, "Well, wrestling's fake." Well, go tell a wrestler's doctor mm -hmm. that it's fake. Yeah. It's not. It's not fake in every single way. Let's put it that no. way. You do mm -hmm. get hurt. You know, it does hurt yeah. and yeah. stuff. I mean, you can't fall from a top turnbuckle and feel like you just landed on a pillow. It's not the mm -hmm. way it happens, you know. So, but I just, it was, it was a little sad. I was kind of glad to see him there, see him there at the same time. But then you also think it's kind of sad to see him there. Yeah. You yeah. know, in a way he should be off limits from all this, you know, to us in a sure. way. So it was... It, it was, um, yeah, a little, little bit of both for me, you know. But um, I definitely enjoyed his movies, and I think that our people our age got fatigued with Burt Reynolds. Yeah, I maybe I completely to admit by the time he was making like Malone <laughs> and things like that, <laughs> yeah. he'd, get, oh, yeah. he'd gotten yeah. a little long in the tooth. His wigs were looking sillier, and uh, he, there, he was such a huge star. You, you couldn't help but get fatigued. With right. the guy, oh, yeah. you know what I mean. He was and, everywhere for a while. Yes. He really was. Yeah, so everywhere, and well, he was apparently with Lonnie Anderson. So you know, hey, I'm a WKRP hey. person. So that's <laughs> hey, yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty. pretty <laughs> I'm pretty excited about all that. But uh, yeah, he's but, got that going for him. Right, right. right. But uh, <laughs> we do tease and say burnt Reynolds and thing on the things on the show yeah. and stuff. But we just wanted to give a little tribute and say you know, condolences to his friends and family and Lonnie. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, it's too bad he, he's gone, but I hope he's at peace and feeling better, feeling yeah. better, Mr. Bunner. I look, he looked like he was in pain. Maybe that's what it was. Like the more of a Good depressed bad, thing, he was just in pain, you know? So, but, yeah. uh, he yeah, had the snowman are up there right now. He's pounding down. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, now uh, real quick. Also, Mr. Ben Harley would like to, yeah. uh, thank everyone up in Chicago. Yeah, uh, they, Chi Town Timo. Yeah, they treated this cheese head pretty nice. They treated this uh, <laughs> Green Bay Packers fan pretty nice. Did not wear any Green Bay gear. Oh boy, smart out there. Move. A little bit smart, smart about move. that. Yeah, so yeah, we, played, smart. we played a uh, after party for Riot Fest at, at Liars Club with. Yeah. Uh, and forgive me, I can't. Oh, oh, Avenues. Avenues was the first band, and then Hot okay. Lips Messiah. 
And then we played, and then, yeah, Bo Weevils played. So that's the first time I've uh, had the pleasure of seeing the Bo Weevils. Uh, Their singer gave me an extra beer chip, Mr. Ben Hartley. (laughs) I liked your little uh, post. What'd you say? (laughs) That makes him a... A folk hero (laughs) and a (laughs) high-level wizard in my world now. That's right, man. uh, um, But that was good. To be honest with you, that got me through the whole night without spending a dime. Really? Yeah. Well, I don't drink much beer. And we yeah, were in uh, a punk rock bar. I wasn't going to order a glass of sherry. I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> I wasn't going to go order a glass of wine uh, or anything. Uh, what vintage do you have? <laughs> I had a Pabst vintage. <laughs> yeah, so I basically, you. I drank like, I, I don't know, four or five Pabst, like the whole night or whatever. Um, that a boy. I'm not much of a beer guy. It kind of. Eh, me either. It can get me into a, a migraine. So I've got to pay attention. So basically, it's keeping yeah. my whistle wet. Wink, wink, okay. if you know what I mean. So uh, <laughs> Yeah, I do. So enjoyed that, and the show went really good. Lots of people there, and um, I think there was some punk rock royalty there. A lot of people oh, yeah? were showing up from Riot Fest and Ubers. Like, we were standing outside smoking and everything, uh-huh. and Ubers kept pulling out <laughs> these real nice, almost, you know, kind of remind me of, like, limos pulling up to an award ceremony, and then the <laughs> yeah. dirtiest motherfuckers get out the back of the limos, you know, <laughs> all these, like, <laughs> punk rock guys, and some of them, you could clearly tell they had played a set, because they looked kind of disheveled. Yeah, yeah they just yeah. played a set and came, and... Uh, <laughs> Let's That's see, Mr. Ben Harley, another announcement. Uh, we are going to, this is our big 420 show. So instead of us talking about far out. random movies, <laughs> far out, man. <laughs> instead, of, instead of talking about uh, random movies we watched over the week, this week uh, we're going to do something a little special. Okay. We've been talking about the movie Primal Rage, the newest uh, yeah. Bigfoot horror film directed by Patrick McGee. It's been making the rounds, at least in our brain pans here in the show. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So we decided we're going to talk a little Bigfoot before our official films. So we're going to have a a, a half Bigfoot show. Half this whole <laughs> show is going to be Bigfoot. That's and, right. And we even have special guest, returning special guest. Returning. Yeah. The Fresh Prince of Darkness, Mr. Mark Diamond from the Dwarves. Mark Diamond, yeah. Yeah. Fresh Prince of Darkness himself. Yeah. He's going to talk. We, we talk a little Primal Rage and a little bit about yeah. other Bigfoot films and stuff like that. So... A little gift to our Bigfoot fans, um, our listeners who are Bigfoot fans. We'll put yes, it that my way. brother in Godzilla. There you Mark go. Mark Diamond. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to uh, speak a little bit about it. Now, that being said, Mr. Ben Harley, I'm going to kind of start out here a little gently. Sure. And we're going to talk Bigfoot. We're going to talk Primal Rage. But yeah. let's start off by alerting people to uh, there's two films that are on Amazon right now. Two Bigfoot documentaries that I watched. And Ben Harley, yeah. you know I was texting you. And that yeah. means something. If I'm watching something, I'm wait, texting wait. you. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> it means there's a sexy Bigfoot <laughs> documentary out there. So let me start off with this one. That's, now, this movie's from 1999. So it's not new. Okay. No new evidence or anything. But it's called Sasquatch Odyssey, The Hunt for Bigfoot. Okay. Now, this documentary is about uh the four horsemen of bigfoot <laughs> of bigfooting now okay the four horsemen that have belgium in there <laughs> yeah. well the four horsemen were um forgive me one of the guy's names i think he's like german or russian i cannot pronounce his name okay, okay. but he's a little guy that's really cantankerous <laughs> and he was and then so it's him we have john green who i'm sure you've heard of he wrote a lot of the original yeah. books uh grover krantz okay. uh, and then peter byrne okay so peter these four Byrne. guys okay. were the original four dr jeff meldrums in okay. the field right. now the and the interesting thing is this movie is a lot more about the original four researcher guys than it really is about bigfoot which makes okay. it super interesting because they couldn't stand each other. Really? And it all stemmed from an ex- expedition that they all went on together <laughs> that was funded by this Texas millionaire guy. Uh-huh. And the way, and John Green was probably the most soft spoken guy out of all these. So the, I'll give it okay. to you the way he put it. He said, when you have people who are stubborn enough to go search for Bigfoot and you put four of them together, on an expedition, you've got four very stubborn and opinionated people all going in their own directions. Right. And 
I think there was basically the camps of this is more human, a hominid, or this okay. is more ape. And the old researchers were really feuding and really uh, split over this. A lot of it had to do with, should we shoot one? Okay. And it's amazing okay. how that was a huge deal. And it's <laughs> funny because this documentary, they're at some kind of conference together. <laughs> and, uh, and the cantankerous German guy is interrupting. He's, he, he's, he's interrupting Grover Krantz at a speaking engagement. Going, you do not know what you're talking about. You're an idiot. These are not really? like this. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, my God, oh, yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, they're, uh, <laughs> Grover was putting up the, the Pat Patterson-Gimlin film. He was trying to show, like, the dimensions of it. And this guy, like, in the back is just going, eh. you know? He's just like, no, no, no. Yeah, I mean, so it's it's very, <laughs> very interesting. But it, but like, there's a couple different things. Um that I picked up from this. One is that Peter Byrne was this British guy. You've seen him before. Okay. okay. You, like all these guys, I know the names sound familiar to you. When yeah. you watch this documentary, you'll recognize everybody from the old documentaries. This yeah. is the old yeah. guard. Okay. And Peter Byrne <laughs> was out there. <laughs> Peter Byrne was out there for 38 years looking for this thing. Did yeah. you know that you want to know what he found? Nothing. Five <laughs> prints. Really? In 38 years. Wow. wow. He was out there, man. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't like in my backyard. He no. wasn't in eight acres of woods. He was out there. Out, you yeah. know, and found that. And I found that insane. And he said that uh, basically that versus the people he's interviewed forced him to keep going on and he was reminding people and he the funny thing is that he said well there's reports going back 200 years I'd like to make a little point here there's reports by white people going back <laughs> 200 years anyone with any skin tone an indigenous person to this area goes back thousands thousands okay? yeah yes and this thank you <laughs> this <laughs> distinction bothers me it bothers me. And I'm not doing, I'm not playing the race card. I'm playing the intellectual card. Yeah. I mean, what? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh -huh. so it's, I'm just saying it's like, so, and I, let's, let's switch white person with scientist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> that's, I don't know. So it kind of bothered me. So again, it's called Sasquatch Oddity. The hunt for Bigfoot, Harley. You yeah, got to check to watch that one out. Yeah, yeah, I will for to. sure. It's history. You know what I mean? It's like, and it's done so well. It's so good. It is old, but you're not looking for new evidence. That's you, okay. Sometimes yeah. I enjoy going back and watching the older ones. I really do. And they do. also, but they also, uh, they do go back and talk about uh, the Patterson uh, Gimlin footage, and they, I believe, John Green was one of the per people who came back and casted. The feet Footprints. from that. Okay. And uh, you will also find out how these guys got into Bigfoot, which okay. is good. It's interesting. It's interesting, yeah. yes, because they got into it organically. Like, I didn't believe in this, and then pff, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Uh, next up, there's a uh, new that's one. That's cool. Yeah, there's a new one out called Cultured Bigfoot. Cultured Bigfoot. Yes. Friend. Yes. So this. Yes, I watched that with. Or watch that as well, my friend. You did watch Not it. Not with you. Okay. Not with you. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I, well, I was there in spirit. <laughs> well, I'll start off here and just kind of give a little rundown. We'll see what you think about it. Uh, this one had people like Cliff from Finding Bigfoot, Lyle Blackburn, yep. Bobo, Jeff Meldrum again, of course. Uh, some of it was shot at the Ohio Bigfoot Conference. I do believe yep. that this past one that we weren't at. Uh, some of it was shot at Cryptid Con, which we have not been to. Um, and there's a poor podcaster guy talking in the woods who has so many mosquitoes <laughs> circling around him. He looked like Big Ben with the peanuts. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a uh, this is a good. Um, I, I what I told you, Ben Harley, and I want to, I want to see what you think about this. What I like sure. about this is that it was candid. Yes, they yeah. weren't homering for Bigfoot. They were no. candid. Mm -hmm. And I'll even, as I told you, even Bobo makes a comment. Our show was kind of ridiculous. Yeah, he said that he and Cliff, neither of them liked the show. Right. He said. So it was silly to them, too. Uh, yeah. What did you think? I liked it. What did you think about that one? <clears throat> um, I liked it, Timo. I watched it in two parts. Um, I enjoyed it, but 
here you go. It'd be a surprise, <laughs> surprise. It was a little slow. Really? It just was a, well, for me, it's a little talky. Uh -huh. Now, some of it I did enjoy. And did you notice old Jeff Meldrum was sitting uh, by the fire pit there, or the fireplace? Oh, yeah, Salt Fork at the right, Lodge. Yeah, yep. right by where our uh, um, right where we used to have our booth, Tim. Oh, that's, that's right. right where, yeah, feet yeah. from <laughs> it. <laughs> yes. But no, I, I, yeah, I enjoyed what was being said for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, I liked what Meldrum was saying. And even he said, and, and I don't think it sounded conceited. Mm -hmm. But like he was saying, just by people like himself lends a little credibility right. to the argument, you know, and also a lot of people are getting into the field because of, you know, and they mentioned some of that. Uh, the gentleman from the Cryptid Museum. Lauren Coleman. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like some of what he said, but then, you know, so he was a little cantankerous at times as right. well, too. You know, but I understand if I'd been in the field as long as that guy has been, I, you know, I'm cantankerous enough, and I ain't <laughs> been out there you right, know, right. much at all, so... Um, but, uh, I, I did find it interesting. It just was a little talky. I think with some of that, I would have rather seen them condense some of it, uh, and add a few more different people talking about Bigfoot. You know what I mean? Even right. just some regular people show me 10 minutes of regular people. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Or is that, I mean, it, it does, it does Just people that are there and it breaks up and breaks it up a little bit. Cause they kept going back to Lyle Blackburn. They kept going back to that one guy at the chains and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then it would get to the point where they would go off topic where, okay, man, humans are bad. Everything. Like, oh God, you know, the world's an awful place. So it's nice to get out. Yeah, it is nice to get out. Right. I know the world's a bad place, but Fuck off. I don't want to hear this stuff. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I, cause I did enjoy it. And, and I enjoyed much more, uh, this one much more than I, I have other ones I've watched maybe. And, and I'm sick of seeing fake Bigfoots walking through the woods too. But even if they would have shown some clips mm -hmm. of possible Bigfoots or yeah, and then talking to regular people, maybe just even throw 10 minutes of that in there and cut out some of the other, I would have thought it would, I would have given it, five stars well i think so, you know. right i think that this cultured bigfoot show is a it was almost like a update of sasquatch yes. Odyssey, uh, Big Odyssey, time. where it's it's yeah. really about the researchers it's really about what yes. they do who they are where they go and stuff it's not really about individual stories and stuff yeah. and you know i had a hard time because we were when we were coming back from chicago we uh we have a friend who's into ufo stuff which is yeah. fine. It's fine. I, I mean, of course there's UFOs. There's just by definition unidentified shit flying through the air all the time. Yeah. You know, so I'm not going to get into the, the alien stuff and like that. But, but, but they kind of were ribbing a friend of ours a little bit and said something about Bigfoot. And I, I'd made a real, real slight comment like, you know, I don't know. I said, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to some of these people, and and of course I got a shower of, oh, here we go. No, no, there's no, uh, there's no. Well, it's kind of sad because of all of the weirdos in it and all of the yeah. fakery, all of the hoaxes, it yeah. really hurts the shit that me and you have uncovered. Mm -hmm. Re and, and everyone else who's interested in this, who bothers sure. to try, just some of the odd things that are like, wait a minute, that is weird. You know, wait a minute, mm -hmm. that isn't so easily explained. Wait a minute. It has been discovered, just not by the right person, apparently. You know, there's a lot of different yeah. things that it's well, hard. Well, made a real good yeah. point. Like, it's all these amateurs that are out there, right, Timo, that are mm -hmm. doing this research. What do you say? And which kind of blew my mind. There's probably only like, what, you say like 10 to 12 scientists out there doing this. All right. the rest are regular people right you know so yeah it's i don't know well and i'm also starting to learn a little bit where the origins of all these people being keeping all their evidence so close to the vest yep it, yeah. it started with the older guys because yeah. they're fighting each other and john green wanted to uh he wanted to share information and the other guys did not want to do that and and i'm starting to sort of wrap my head around that and i think they passed yeah. i think they passed that down to the current crop of people yeah. and i'm yeah. also going to say that i'm pretty much thinking almost everybody out there if not everyone is an amateur 
Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Got a couple people like Meldrum. I think 12 scientists is probably riding a little high. Yeah. You know, if people yeah. going out there and stuff. But both both documentaries, I think, were just were just fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And um, yeah, another point, we've been making points, Mr. Ben Harley, about yeah. uh, Angio and I moving out here to what we're calling Dermal Ridge. You know, we do yes. live, we live on the edge of a, a, a woods, a fairly decent sized woods. We own eight yeah. acres of it. Um, it's much bigger than that. Lots of critters, lots of things in that. And I've been talking about how we've been just having a ball listening to the owls talking about some crazy noises. So last night, mm-hmm. this was great. Because, you know, I've been kind of saying, look, you have to live out here. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to live out here to to understand what, what you're not hearing when you're at home. So right. people who live in a neighborhood or something like that, and even if they go every weekend out and search for Bigfoot, you've got to understand what you're hearing is not unusual. And you don't know right. what usual is. Like It's almost like a, like a, a, a squirrel like watching traffic. They're not <laughs> from the woods. They're not yeah, used to right, that. You're right. not used to coming in here. So last night we're listening to owls, and I am not kidding you. We hear this. Wah, 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 wah. You know, like that. It sounded like yeah. a monkey. It was an owl. <laughs> yeah. We know it was an owl. We know it was. It was an odd owl. You know, <laughs> might have yeah. been a, an unfortunate owl. I don't know, but it was an, it was an owl nonetheless. <laughs> but you know, it's almost like. Researchers are walking in the woods. Okay. Yeah. When I'm out spraying bush honeysuckle <laughs> in my <laughs> in my woods, I don't hear yeah. anything. I don't hear anything when I'm walking through the woods at all. Why? I'm traipsing through the woods. <laughs> I'm traipsing right. through the woods. I don't hear anything. But we live here, and now that we are a part of the woods. At night, man, do we hear shit. If I'm not walking through the woods, if we're just at home and we're sitting on the porch or the back deck, I'm still telling you, you hear things you don't hear and yeah. you don't live there. I hear weird stuff all the time. Very strange. And I'm not, well, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I met, you know, it's funny, Tim. I'll, I'll try to do this real fast. But uh, Sydney and I went out to the War of 1812 battlefield, <laughs> finally. And yeah. we did. We walked through the woods and stuff. My problem is the woods were real short. We ended up walking way far around and almost died. So, <laughs> of heat stroke. But anyways, in through the woods, She's I was looking. She's dragging you by your hair back home. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, I'm watch. I'm like uh, looking, and there's there's some tree structures, Tim. Now, uh, is this patch of woods big enough to support a Bigfoot? I don't think so. Right. But there were some interesting things. Now, what did that? I don't know, but it's about the same stuff that you might see on them shows. Yes. You're like, oh, that's a squatch. That's a squatch. Yes. I don't know what did this. I don't know what twists a branch that high up, but also, you know, there's there's some high winds that can go through. Now, yes. we're not a tornado alley by any means. Right. But, the, you know, occasionally... But we get much more high winds. But there was some interesting stuff. But then again, also, people are out there cutting these logs up and things to make the trails. And there's when it floods, things happen, too. When things flood, trees, uh, ten, giant trees tend to build up or push things or mash things over or end up making structures of their own. Mm-hmm. But there were a couple of things that caught my eye. Now, I wasn't taking a three-and-a-half-year-old too deep out into the woods off the beaten path to investigate, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Yeah, yeah. But there was some interesting stuff. Uh, I'm going to say, Timo, without a shadow of a doubt, 99.999% sure there's no Bigfoot in them woods. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. But, what, what, you know, hey, I'm having fun. But still, you know, like, uh, there's some of the same goofy shit that these guys that are out in the woods seeing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know. Well, I am fascinated yeah. by some of them structures. I really am. I, well, I am. Yeah. Not so much yeah. here, but way, way out. But who knows? You never know. Right. Well, I see them out in my woods, too, because trees, yeah. they fall in odd ways. And they really yeah. do. They fall Very more, than, odd. They fall more yeah. in, than I ever expected. it. Well, I mean, I was I've seen so too. many the trees. Winds, yeah. yeah. If the wind's blowing and it blows back, uh, these tall trees blows back 10 feet. Uh, way up at the top, right? Sways ten feet. It's going to shoot a branch. Kind oh of yeah! Oh yeah! You might not see it, <laughs> yeah. all the time, but right. it's going to shoot a branch. You know, so it's a possibility, right? You know, and, and, and that's that's what I'm thinking while I'm out there. I got right, proof. right. <laughs> well, remember too that remember the tree in my front yeah. yard that was twisted in half. Yeah, there was a tree twisted yeah. in half in my front 
yard. Okay. Yeah. I do not think that that was a Sasquatch, Sasquatch. Yeah. but I can't tell you how it happened, mm. but it doesn't it, necessarily, it, was, it yeah. was interesting, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't Take mean it's it. for sure something else. So it's right. not that this has shaken my, and I don't really believe in it, but I, I am fascinated and I'd like it to be so. And I'm very curious to yeah, me too. how people are looking for it and stuff like that. It doesn't affect my interest in it. It just focuses Sure. Like what I find to be credible evidence. And I'm still telling you to this day, the only credible evidence to me is eyewitness reports and possibly Mm -hmm. the Patterson Gimlin footage because I've seen it. I've seen it dissected by smart people, people who do this for a living, who dissect footage and stuff. And they are saying that's not a person in a suit. It and it, it, yeah. and it looks yeah. like it from a just glance. It certainly does, you know, but ooh. so anyway, so I will, but I can't tell anyone I know for sure it's real. I can't say that. <laughs> right, right. I can't say that. So I'm not going to, but, but there's a lot of evidence and, and I think it's interesting still. And I love having mysteries anyway. So yeah. I, I am a, I'm prone to it. I admit that, but Harley, you know me well enough to know I'm kind of a skeptical bastard, though, too. Yeah. Hard for me to trust anybody. So I do come at it from two different directions. Now, all that being said, uh, it is I do enjoy living out here and hearing this stuff is helping me along. It's helping me get focused in on this. Now, getting to primal rage, which I would would consider this a semi-official film. Okay, we're going to have Mr. Mark Diamond on here in a few minutes. We're going to give his opinion on Primal Rage before we get to our official, official little films. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but uh, now me yeah. and Mark Diamond had seen Primal Rage a couple weeks ago. You finally uh, picked up the Primal Rage this week. Did you buy it on, or you run it? Or what, how'd you get it? I, yeah, I rented it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> iTunes, which I won't be doing anytime again. So. <laughs> yeah, just stick with the Amazon. It's much more simple to, it just goes in a little list. Loud. It I goes in a list. find it, you know, and then I'm like, I found it on my iPad finally after it told me it'd be 109 hours till it was available. I'm like, it's gonna, I'm like, it's gonna expire by then. Yeah, yeah so I found it on my iPad, like All on right. my television app. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, okay, I did good. watch it. So, too. so what'd yeah. you think? Yeah. Um, you know, Tim, this uh, definitely one of the better Bigfoot movies I've ever seen. It's probably at least in my top five, if not top three. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's a good film. My issue, and as I have with most of these movies, and I, and I apologize, you know, it sounds like a broken record, but this movie to me, it's just about 20 minutes too long. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to get that out of the way first. I just think it was a little too long, but going into this movie, I didn't have really a problem with it, uh, the time wise, until you know, there about the last twenty minutes or something. I started to think, man, they could have really shortened this uh-huh, some. Uh-huh. But up until then, I really, like I said, I liked the first like half hour a lot, uh-huh. and I think if the rest of the film was as good as like the first half hour, forty five minutes, it might be my favorite uh, Bigfoot movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I. I <sighs> I kind of had a problem going in. So you liked the buildup more than you did the action. Well, yeah, because I liked um, the buildup with um, uh, the the storylines were okay. I'm all right with that. I was okay. I was into what was going on, the characters, all that. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, I I once once the action really started to get going, I did enjoy it. It, it, But to me, it reminded me more of an action film. Mm hmm. Uh, as opposed to more of a horror film, mm-hmm. I guess it, it was more of a. Let's see, it's like a horror action film. Like, there's like some Predator, good action. like Predator, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because um, I liked it, the how stealthy the Sasquatch or whatever it was at first, mm-hmm. or it was at first. Mm-hmm. I thought, wow, I was actually like, holy shit! Mm-hmm. I really was. I was like, oh my god, this is this is it, man. This is what I've been waiting for. I did have a problem though because we talked about it briefly beforehand. Uh, I, I was I knew I was gonna have a problem with the shooting of the bow and arrow. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I yeah, I didn't really like that a whole lot, but I liked the Bigfoot. I thought yeah, 
how stealthy it was and everything. And I like the tension. There's a lot of tension in this movie. There's tension before they hit the guy. I don't want to give too much away if people want to watch this, I guess. Oh, yeah. But there's yeah. good, there, so there's good tension in, in the first 45 minutes. It's almost perfect how much here's the like, tension. It builds and builds and builds between the, the husband and wife, the husband, wife, and the hillbillies, you know, the. Didn't he it, look like. Um, like Vernon Wells? Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, he looked, I mean, it was almost like, did they get a, a Vernon Wells cosplayer in the movie? I, you know, it's funny, I thought it was him for the longest time, and I was like, man, but he, you know, I'm like, no, it's not him. Yeah, wait, no, that is him. No, it's not him. And then I'm like, no, it's not him. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> not him. But yeah. he did, and I liked that guy. I thought he mm -hmm. was good. Mm -hmm. um, and I liked most of that, if they would just tighten it up a little bit. So, I'm trying not to beat up because on it because this is a good movie, right? This is a good, not there's not very, very few good Bigfoot horror movies, and I think they could be some of the best ones in my estimation. You yeah. can make the best horror movies with Bigfoot, so this one is good. I like the Bigfoot. I thought it was it, it was cool. I I just think it it needed to be trimmed up a little bit. Um, now. Do you mean the Bigfoot, the creature itself, or the story? No, the, the, story. the story. The story just needed to be trimmed up. Now, as far as the Bigfoot goes, I think it looked good. I thought it looked great. It does. Mm -hmm. um, it, I like the, the mask kind of that it's wearing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give away the rest of it for people who haven't seen it, mm -hmm. so we can talk about that some other time. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's a very good, because they keep it kind of hidden at first a little bit, not much, because what I liked about this movie is what I like about exist as well is it happens day and night there's not you know what i mean right. and that's scary too with you know out being out in the woods and the bigfoot you know because most people think oh it just comes out at night you know no right. this right. thing's everywhere right. and i liked that and the way it blended in with the forest and things like that mm -hmm. so um i'm a probably you know if i had to i would give it three and a half out of four stars mm -hmm. Um, I think it could be a four star movie, but there was just some of it just dragged on a little much for me. Mm -hmm. Um, the ending, uh, but you know, I have a hard time with endings anymore on a lot of movies. So this one, same thing exists. I had the same problem with the ending. I didn't really understand it. Kind of mm -hmm. this one I understood, but I, I am okay. I guess with it, I'm okay with it, but it's just, um, I did like it though, Tim. I did. I, I did like it. Right. A lot, and I, that's, yeah. that's like when um, coming up here, the, when I'm talking to, to Mark Diamond, that, I mean, it's, it's very similar. It's almost like we're being very critical of it, but we're also saying, you know, to the filmmakers and everyone else, it's like, it, we, we're not insulting you. We're being critical because we actually care enough oh, yeah. about this stuff that we are going to be critical. But you know what I, I was kind of saying is that, and I don't mean this as an insult either, it's it's kind of an average horror film, which in today's yeah. age is like an Academy Award winning horror <laughs> film because they all suck. So it's like a it's like an average okay horror film, but above average Bigfoot film. And as far as yeah, the Bigfoot, yeah. this is very interesting because it is kind of going back to the arguments between the original four horsemen of Bigfooting. It's that it looks way ape like. But it acts mm -hmm. way more human like. Yeah. So, and that's a different it, thing in Bigfoot films, too. There hasn't been a lot yeah. of that, except for sex. There's been a lot of, right. a lot of Bigfoot right. there. Because, you know, us human women, man, human women must be the hottest thing in the genome, you know, in the <laughs> yeah. entire ecosystem, because yeah. everything wants to have sex with our women, including Bigfoot. You know? <laughs> Humanoids so, from the deep. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. It's, um, yeah. I think they could have done a little bit more with the Native American stuff in here. I know uh -huh. they did, which which uh, that made me a little upset because they did a lot at first with them, and then they just kind of dropped off. I'm like, wow, God, okay. Well, they're right. kind of setting but, up. With, it was more of a spiritual. You know, it, yeah, Oma. he's taking these. Oma. Yeah, and they're taking and Oma is a is a yep. uh, uh, another name for Sasquatch in the uh, yep. Native American tongue. Yeah, as you were, and I think that's actually I think it's like the original. Mm -hmm. Almost not well. I don't know if it's original. Well, it's, it was original it's a Native it was American. Like, it's older than Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> Put it yeah. that way, you know. But yeah. I think like I didn't like the very beginning. I, I'm kind of the opposite of what you're yeah. saying. I I didn't really care about the people. But you know how I am with these movies. It's like ah, I'll watch a drama if I want to watch about the people. Yeah. Well, know, so the whole you know, thing with him getting out of jail. Much, really. 
yeah. and everything was like, eh, that kind of was a stretch for me. And But see, <clears throat> these are all personal tastes. They're not necessarily yeah. flaws of the film. Yes, because I think right. it was written fine. I mean, I mean, I could hear people bitching just two guys. I guess it's a guy and a girl driving along and there's a Bigfoot. You know, no yeah. story, no reason. I could see that criticism coming in too. You can't really win. When you put out any piece of art, we mean you both know this. You can't win. Somebody's <laughs> no. gonna criticize it for some reason. That's what we're doing right now. But I liked how it I I think it got weird to me. The whole thing was weird. It was almost like yeah. um I don't know how much time some filmmakers have spent with hunters out in the woods. Yeah. But I'm still waiting to find them dudes in all these movies. No, the dudes weren't. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, no one lives long if they hunt like that. They all no, shoot each other no. by accident and stuff, you know? Yeah. And I, I'm, I am fatigued with I'm fatigued with stereotypes to begin with, but I'm fatigued yeah. with the redneck stereotype too, because you know, rednecks don't act like that. Mm-mm. Sorry. No. I live around no. all red. They don't act like that. They're actually much more intelligent and shit. They just like getting their trucks muddy sometimes, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, they, man, yeah. and they drink beer. And <clears throat> sometimes they, they get a little rough. Live off the land. <laughs> yeah. A little, little immature sometimes and stuff. I get that. And they're, they are who they are, you know, but there's a difference between a cartoonish, yeah. You know, and they that. were much more cartoonish. Yeah, they than, were. So that yeah. it was hard for me. But I do kind of like how one thing I really do like, though, about it is they never let them teeter into full on villains. No, uh-uh. it, it, it I looked, thought they were going. Yes, to, or, it looked like, like it was. I, yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is not going to end well. <laughs> right. It looks like they were going to go that way. And I do appreciate that. So at least yeah, I appreciate too. the fact that he said, OK, these are overly stereotyped. Uh, you know, hunters yeah. or whatever. And here's, you know, but at the same time, they're really not, they're not, they're, they're, they're fucking with them. Yeah. That's what they're yeah. doing. They're fucking with them. Yeah. Unfortunately, when you're watching the movie, you don't trust anybody. So you're not really <laughs> thinking they're fucking with them. You're, you don't know. No. You're curious. Uh-uh. And see, sometimes to me, that takes me out of the story. When yeah, I start focusing too. in on like, are they fucking with them or not fucking with them? I kind of like to know who everybody is. Unless it's yeah, a mystery. Yeah, me too. It's a mystery, maybe not. You know, maybe I like the mystery of the Bigfoot and how that's revealed and stuff like that. Uh, but, but again, these are kind of like my personal issues and personal taste. They're yeah. not out of bounds with good movies or anything these days. Um, and really, honestly, and this is something I, I mentioned on the interview with Mark too, is that you can totally tell that a special effects artist put this thing together and put it together as a labor of love because man. The one thing, it was almost like I can imagine when they were, when, like, I guess Patrick was coming up with this going, one yeah. thing I'm not going to do is let people say it's a stupid Bigfoot costume. That's the one thing yeah. I'm not going to allow, <laughs> you know, and I yeah. can always see him do it. And I appreciated it, you know, that yeah. it did look really good. It's different. It's definitely different. And the Native American stuff is odd. Um, and it's, yeah. it's odd, too. Sort of like the the hunters are, are a little little odd it's just yeah it's a little off you know there ain't nothing wrong with that it kind of sparks your interest um i do agree no, I, I like the guy who played the sheriff i liked his character i did yeah. i thought he was one of the stronger characters in the film mm-hmm. and, and you know i yeah. did i thought he was good i just i was hoping for a little bit more out of him at the end mm-hmm. yeah well <laughs> i yeah. was like oh, okay well there you go <laughs> yeah so <laughs> oh, i think that it could have i i think you know there's a couple of things that could have been tightened up um yeah but it's these are I mean, we're kind of really just being <clears throat> normal critics of films, which is what we do every week. You know, but at the same time, movie. it is. It's, it is a good movie, and and not even just a Bigfoot movie. It's a good movie. Yeah, period, I agree. You know, yeah, and yeah. Um, I'm glad they're doing Bigfoot movies. Uh, but it's it's good to see a good one with yeah, like you said labor of love put into it too. Right. You know, like it's because you can tell it's. I enjoyed it, and I and I don't want to sound like I'm beaten up on it by any means. But no, I no, did enjoy no, it. not at all. I did too. I th- yeah. For me, I, I I just think if it was 20 minutes shorter, it might be my favorite Bigfoot movie right now. Right. It, I just think it's just. But uh, I still I I'm I'm still on the exist bandwagon. It's not yeah, really a bandwagon. Nah, I think this is way better than exist. I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it was way better. I just think the thing with exist. I think exist is more is much scarier. Than this movie, as far as you know, being scared 
I, yeah. This one didn't scare me. I, I, which is what action films don't scare me. Predator did it first because you didn't know what the hell that was. You right, know? right. Now, at first, this did scare me because he was lurking a lot more in the, in the, you know. But then after that, it was full on just, just destruction. You know what I mean? Right. I liked with exists with them in the house and him coming there. It's more scary, you know. I just. Yeah, I, I, just I didn't found it hate exist, scary. and I don't really want yeah. anybody because I I do yeah. what I do is you loved it so much I kind of temper yeah. it down because I yeah. I liked it but I didn't think yeah. first of all we both know I don't like found footage because of the shaky right. shit I can't it makes yeah. me sick and yeah. I, I, it's unfair it really is kind of to me it's like oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I I I feel like I've been triggered <laughs> you yeah. know it's like I can't I just I can't handle it but but I I just I think, think they did a better yeah. attempt with that. Than most of the, especially those, the that. paranormal ones, because those, yeah, that we've watched or, or we've reviewed. It's far yeah, from the worst found yeah. footage movie. It's way, yeah. way far from that. Yeah. And, I, and, and that's only because yeah. of the GoPro stuff. That's the why I can forgive it. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm real, I don't like that stuff. It's hard for me, too. I just don't, right. you know. But to me, I really think this is kind of a cross between Exist and Predator. Yeah. That's not yeah. two bad movies to cross up. That's not, that's not, no, you know, it's and I'm not saying, really, yeah. right. I'm not saying, I love Predator. I love that. The it's first a good one. flick. Yeah. And I'm not Great saying movie. that they went into this going, we're going to make Predator and Exist. I'm just no. saying that's really what the outcome. Um, yeah. kind of feels like um the one thing i kind of want to say here and then we'll get to our mark diamond interview but the one thing I, I, I i'd like yeah. to say and, and I, I know you might want to say something too is to the bigfoot community and the people that listen to the show that maybe you know i don't know how many yeah. people in the bigfoot community listen all the time because we're a horror podcast but yeah. to the, but but to the people that really have an aversion to bigfoot horror films yeah can you relax just yeah. relax. I mean, and I don't want to say grow up because that's insulting, but it's like kind of like there's a lot of other problems out there in the world and stuff. And sure. you don't know if I mean, if, you don't know Bigfoot. Well, right. The thing is, <laughs> is the, if the thing is eight foot tall right. and 800 pounds, I mean, it can tear you apart. And mm-hmm. if you piss it off, it probably it's going will. To. Yeah. So a lot yeah. of these films. The, so we're the mother grizzly bear, right? right? Exactly, exactly. So, and I think and I don't dislike them. I think they're very cute from afar. <laughs> I do too. Actually, I think they're sweet. I want to. And one of our favorite movies is about a crazy grizzly bear, <laughs> yeah. right? Demo? Right. So doesn't I think, make me want to go out there and beat one up. No, know? no. But the thing yeah. is, I think that people need to lay off. I mean, yeah. I, and and I'm not trying to put words in, in Patrick McGee's mouth. All I'm saying is that the one thing that stuck out is when I said. You know, have you, you know, the horror community doesn't like really, or the Bigfoot community doesn't really like Bigfoot horror films. That look yeah. in his face, I know that look. He's heard yeah. this before. And, yeah. and I want people to leave him alone about yeah. this. You know, it's like he'd put together a pretty damn good movie here. Yeah. And if you don't like horror films, then don't watch it. You know, right. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out there to you. I don't Uh-oh. watch Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> Do you know why? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like cute and cuddly movies about a creature. Yeah. yeah. I don't hate the movie. It's a good movie, but it's that's not movie. my yeah. perception Bigfoot. of Bigfoot. It's not. Right. And so I don't watch it, but I don't, I don't besmirch John Lithgow. You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't go, that's just insane. It shouldn't exist. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. This is so much better than the asylum crap and stuff they're putting out on Sci Fi Channel. I mean, when we're looking at Abominable mm-hmm. as a really good Bigfoot movie, you know, <laughs> I mean, come on. It's it's a goofy movie. You know, it's yeah. not bad, but it's a goofy no. movie, you know, and stuff. And this is this is a like a, a high water mark, a high mark, you know, for, for Bigfoot films, I think. And it's not my favorite. Abominable Snowman and Himalaya is a little it's not always going to be my favorite. I hope something takes a pla- takes its place. Yeah, I really do. Um, but this is really one of the good ones. It really is, it is. and and it's grown on me. I mean, I've only watched it the one time. It's yeah. grown on me. I had to think about it because it's different, and it it really shocks your system if you're into Bigfoot when you're yeah. watching it. So you have to sit back, relax, and go. Wait a minute. This is a movie. This is someone's imagination. I mean, this is this is like it's fantasy. This is a movie. So I can't go, Bigfoot, I didn't do that. Well, how the hell do I know? <laughs> Call Matt Moneymaker. He he, right. This, you know what's funny? <laughs> this guy might be right on. Yeah, he might be. It he might, might be, be right just on. Like this. <laughs> and that would be the irony of ironies. That's why yeah. we can't find the damn things. 
Because they wear masks and shoot bows and arrows and shit. You know? That's right. Um, exactly. And I don't think we're giving anything away by that because I think me and Mark talked no. about that a little bit too. Where they, they use tools. I think it's, it, yeah. it mentions that on on even when you uh, the uh, synopsis whatever gotcha. Gotcha. I do this. Oh. I'm gonna give it a but great. Yeah, no. yeah, I'm gonna, it's great bait yeah, up for too. me, and I'm, I'm oh yeah, I'm interested in it. Definitely. I'm interested in it. Yeah. Um, well, let's get to it's the one that I can I would want to tell people about too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to show people or tell people about. So I, I, then I know I really like it. You know, right. Well, too, just like so. we told people yeah. about Stomping Ground, which is not it's yeah. just a very small movie. It's not a bad Bigfoot movie though. It's not. Oh, it, I like it. It's 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 good. It is good. It, it's kind of like this a little bit with. Um, it's similar to this a little bit. Yeah. You know, like it, um, it's not as uh, it's more sophisticated. Is no, this? Yeah. But it's it's not embarrassing at all, and, and, oh, and no. for no money. It's I a mean, good movie. Yeah it's, yeah, it's a good movie, and they don't shy too punch away from Bigfoot and stuff. So, so as with Stomping Ground and that, and you know all that, I think you yeah. know this movie needs to be checked out and seen because, like I said, it is a decent horror film about Bigfoot, and that is oh, yeah, rare. Sure. This is <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. when we're when we're when we're bitter clingers hanging on to creature from Black Lake. <laughs> You know it's rare, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, well, let's yeah, get to it's nowhere the, near as good as Boggy <laughs> Creek. Damn it! <laughs> well, let's get to uh, let's get to Mr. Mark Diamond here and yeah, uh, and see what that. his thoughts are on Primal Rage. We'll come back and then get to our official films real quick. All right, here we go, Mr. Benner. Cool, bye. Mark right, Diamond from the Dwarves. Here we go. Yeah, Fresh Prince. Like to welcome back friend of the show and uh, returning guest from the uh, legendary punk rock band, The Dwarves. We have Mr. Mark, the Fresh Prince of Darkness, Diamond. Hey, Tim. How are you? Good to be back. Oh, great. I'm doing great. And uh, we're glad to have you back. And we had you on the show today because uh, it's no secret, especially people listening to the show, that Harley and myself are Bigfoot fans. And also no secret that you as well are a Bigfoot fan. And all of us have stumbled upon a new Bigfoot movie that is definitely worth talking about called Primal Rage, uh, directed by Patrick McGee. So we wanted to have you on the show, Mark, and you saw Primal Rage by the same time I did. And uh, give, me a, give us your thoughts on this film. Well, you know, you have to preface that with, you know, I love Bigfoot films, the entire genre. Most of them are unwatchable crap. And by most of them, you're really talking above 90%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, know, you got to go really far back to The Abominable Snowman, uh, Night of the Demon, really good movies that were interesting in any way. And, and, and also just uh, that, that looked like movies. They weren't just complete straight to video crap. Right. Um, so the, the bar is set so low on these films, and basically most of them just fall apart because they show the. Cheap Halloween gorilla suit in the first scene, and then it's just kind of over after that with a bunch of bad actors and whatever. I mean, for, for myself in the last few years, I'm not sure what year it was. I, I was impressed with a Boggy Creek remake. I think it was just called Boggy Creek. That had you know some young some young actors who could act. They took a little, they put a little twist on the Bigfoot. It, it was original. Mm -hmm. I thought that was good. And then, um, you know, most of them are just bad. There was a film called Embedded that had one good scene with a dog mm -hmm. um, that I enjoyed. But, you know, most of them just kind of, you know, are cheap. Right. They don't look good, and there's not a lot of thought of them. Primal Rage, which I had heard about, I didn't exactly rush out to see when it was first playing because I figured it would be the same thing. I finally got, and we're talking about a real movie. This is a film that looks good. You know, it, yeah. it looks good. Um, you know, the, the director knows how to frame a shot. You know, the shots look good. He also, you know, was a special effects guy. Right. So he designed the creature, and he took some liberties with what people are used to with a Bigfoot uh, creature, but it's different. It's original. Uh, the acting. You got actors in there who are good. They might be a little stiff, but it's good. It's just so far above average. It just really stood out to me. I was watching it late at night, and I figured, well, he'll get through an hour of this, and I just won't be able to take it. And it, it grabbed me. I, I, I really loved it. I think it's by far the best Bigfoot movie that I've seen in 20 years. It's definitely Easily. different. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's different, too. And they, as uh, we were talking about a little bit before we started, that the, it's not a normal, quote, end quote, normal Bigfoot uh, movie with the same, uh, you know, tr tree knocks right. and it, things like that, you know. 
It doesn't. It doesn't follow the rules. It doesn't follow the the Bigfoot mythos, if you will. It takes some liberties. It changes it up, but you know, it's something that you haven't seen a hundred, two hundred times already. And I think that's what made it stronger as a film. And there'll always be those people who's like, well, that's not what Bigfoot's supposed to be. That didn't follow the rules. He can't do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll always, you know, look down upon that. But for me, I was like, you know, the first time in that film, I don't want to give spoilers, but let's just say you see it use a tool. Right. I was like, well, what's going on? You know, how Mm -hmm. can this be? But it made it a really much more interesting film. He acts more human and looks more ape-like. That's the way I kind of explained it. But um, now that I think of it, in, in Night of the Demon... The creature at one point uh, picks up an axe and chops someone's arm off. Oh, that's I remember right. correctly. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. They were they uh, were kind of flying by the seat of their pants in that movie, though. You know, yeah, that, you know yeah. That, that, that that's a fun one. But yeah, this movie is like when that happened, I was a bit shocked. But you know what? I went with it, and and I liked it. I liked the whole, you know, aspect that he brought to it. That I'm sure a lot of purists won't like. Right. But you know, you got what you have is somebody who can make a competent, real-looking movie, got people who could actually act and hold the story, and then he put a twist on it, which I give him all the credit. The creature looks different, but it looks good. Yeah. And the actual, uh, the gore and violence effects are fantastic. Yeah. See, I was concerned when I was watching it, so I, I need to see it again, and I'll tell you why, because I basically watched the movie very guarded. I don't like movies that cheat. I hate movies that cheat you at the end. You know, I can't stand it. And Since the Bigfoot was using tools, as you say, it's a good way of putting it. I was very concerned that this was going to be not what they were advertising. I thought I thought this was going to be some shriek and mutilated comes to mind. Something that that (laughs) something that is not what it's appearing to be. And since it was and and had a mask on, too. Right. You know, shriek and mutilated. It's funny that you bring that one up because there's another one which fell apart so quickly at how cheap and horrible the monster looked. But then in a way, it makes sense at the end when it turns out it was a cheap, horrible cost. Right. So then, now that I think about it, maybe they were brilliant. I don't know. Yeah, right. I just I remember watching that movie and the twist on it uh, was interesting. But the, the, the movie will never live up to the most amazing poster art from any movie was from that film. When I saw that poster art, I couldn't wait to see it. That is true. Well, see, and that so that all made me concerned when I was watching Primal Rage. And the other thing, too, is... Uh, and Harley and I have been through this a little bit, even with our little movie we put together, because there's uh, there's a little horror element element to it in that the Bigfoot is dangerous. And a lot of people in the Bigfoot community do not like a horror movie surrounded by Bigfoot. They do not like because they think it's um, insulting, I guess, to the creature. They don't they don't think it's a dangerous animal. We'll, we'll put it that way. Uh, my point of view is anything that's like 10 feet tall and, you know, 800 pounds is probably going to be dangerous just by definition to a person. Right. And you know what? Nobody's going to make a better looking, nice Bigfoot movie than Harry and the Hendersons. Right. You know, which I still love. And I cry every time I watch it at the end when he says, we don't want you go away. Right. You know, that's always going to be, you know, there's a slew of horrible movies after that. Little Bigfoot, my friend Bigfoot, mm-hmm. Bigfoot's Adventure, all this crap. You know, there's never going to be a, a better, nice Bigfoot. You know, the classic ones you have are things like the original Boggy Creek, where it's not killing people, but it's still scary. Just right. because of the nature of a big hairy thing outside your window. You know, I always thought of uh, Night of the Demon as being the best killer Bigfoot movie. Abominable comes to mind more recently. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one, you know, I, I was very, you know, again, you know, I, I set the bar so low on these things. Right. The, the, the moment it came on, I'm just like, well, it looks like someone actually knows how to use the camera, frame a shot. <laughs> right. Um, right. You know, just basic things, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like that. They really lack most of these films. Like that was our, you know, not the bad, you know, sci fi channel, yeah. you know, effect kind of things or whatever, or acting. It's like it was just way above. And then I, I personally enjoyed the twist. I, I, I embraced it. It surprised me, but I went with them. Right. And, uh, I liked it. I thought it made it a better film. I, I can enjoy the bad big films to a point. And then there's just such a, so many of them just flooded the market that I, I just can't really enjoy it for the sake of it just being shitty. You know? Well, right. And some of them are literally Halloween costumes from Walmart or something like that. They, they've seriously, they make these movies 
and they just put a guy in a costume like that. And that's I, it's insulting to me. That is the one thing with Primal Rage. The thing with Primal Rage is before I watched it, I kind of did a little research on it and stuff because I bought it and I wanted to look at it, make sure I wasn't wasting my money. And I saw I saw a couple stills of the Bigfoot and they weren't good stills. And they weren't, you know, they weren't like right on it or anything like that. But man, I was like, ah, I don't know. It doesn't look too good. But what was interesting, though, is when you saw in the film, when it's moving and everything, it looked really fantastic. And I don't, yeah, don't mean the I design agree. as much as it looked very good. It was done very well, whatever the design right. was. Right, and I think that that's a big high point of it. I agree, too. I had seen a couple of stills, and I'm like, oh, that looks kind of weird. It's a little more apish, whatever. It didn't blow me away. When you see the movie, it takes you a while to realize it's wearing something, Right. you know? Um, also, one thing I thought that he did really well was, um, you know, having it in frame the whole time while there's dialogue going on, but you don't notice it until it moves. Right. There's one great scene where they're hiking around a big rock. They're just talking. You're watching it and whatever, and it goes, and suddenly you see that it's been there the whole time. It right. stretches out its arms and stands up. I thought that was fantastic. And, and then, you know, he uses that trick a few more times to less effect, mm-hmm. but that that initial shot i thought that was just great right you know and i kind of feel bad i feel a little bad for patrick mcgee too because uh when i met him at horror hound and i mentioned to him that the bigfoot community doesn't like horror films and he gave me a very distinct look very distinct look that yes i'm aware (laughs) you know and i think it's sad that that uh, i don't know some people will shut their minds off to watching a film it's a fantasy it's a horror film. And I, I've mentioned this to right. Harley too. It's like, you know, they make horror movies about killer bears, lions. I mean, we've watched a movie with Suzanne Summers ants, you know, I mean, right. everything in nature can kill you. And I don't understand why they get so offended. If it's a Bigfoot killing people, I, I don't, I really don't understand. I do understand that these people aren't coming to it as horror movie fans. That's something we learned quickly. But these people are not horror movie fans. They're not they're not fantasy fans. They've seen something. They're average plumbers, police officers, accountants, all getting together telling their stories. I get that, but you gotta have a little fun with it. I don't get it, but then again, I'm a fan of horror films. You know, and also, you know, he, he took it in a different direction. You know, he had it doing things as people aren't used to seeing it do. And that's true. Yeah. The Indian spiritual connection and whatnot. I mean that's goes outside the box of your average we were in the woods we saw something and it got kind of scary type deal when i'd spoken to you prior you mentioned that it almost at a point takes on sort of like the predator yes but which to me was a total twist total turn but i i i actually embrace it at first i was a little shocked wait a minute what's going on here then i was like you know this is different it's original and, and i thought he did a, a good job of it yeah i i, I enjoyed that and and I think what's kind of cool about it is uh, I only watched that one time. I only watched it, but even not watching it again, it's growing on me as I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I went back the next day and watched certain scenes again, and I, I really enjoyed it. I'm the opposite of most Bigfoot researchers or whatever the community. I, I was a little more kind of I could take I could give or take the the human drama that was in it with the guy getting right. out of jail and stuff. I, I was. It was somebody trying to write a story and trying to make the characters three dimensional. I get that, but sometimes in a horror film, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> I don't really care. Interesting thing about that guy, the guy, the main male character. Mm-hmm. They shot most of that film, and then uh, they took a break or that budget stuff, or I don't know what for whatever reason. Um, and then they came back about eight months later to finish the end. Mm-hmm. In that interim time, the guy was in a horrible car accident and lost his lower leg. Really. Yeah, it, it's on. If you watch the making of on the, the DVD or whatever, I, I bought it. He actually lost his leg during the break. Oh, and when he came back, he, he's wearing uh, the whole final fight scene and all that. Yeah. He only has one leg. By that point, they had fitted him. You know, the doctors got him a, a prosthetic and he learned to walk with it. But he was very aware of, like, not wanting it to be obvious. You know what I mean? Yeah. When in the story. But, again, another little tidbit about that. Yeah, the... Uh, a bunch of the final scenes was eight months later, and he at that point had lost his leg below the knee. 
Oh, I just see. I had no idea. I I bought it streaming yeah. on Amazon, so I didn't buy the DVD. Okay, yeah, I, I got it off Amazon like a, a DVD, and uh-huh. you know, there's a whole thing about it, and they show him in the hospital recuperate. I'm like, oh, holy shit, his leg's gone, you know. And uh, yeah, he came back and you know did his therapy and the whole deal, but uh, it was a uh, yeah. That's he wouldn't make it match up. It didn't look like he was limping or dragging or walking weird, but right, it actually lost the bottom part of one of his legs. That's that's absolutely impressive. Um, I, I everything things that are a little odd. Some of the some of the human drama, like the the hunters they find. The, you the never... hunters are pretty, pretty stereotype mm-hmm. hunters. You know the redneck guys in the woods, but I didn't think they were terrible. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. The, the the two main characters at the beginning are a bit stiff, but I think they loosen up quite a bit by the end. Right. It does get to be more about the one thing I don't like about the. It seems like a trend in horror films, and I hear this. I hear people say this. Almost in a, in a vitriolic way, they're like, "Oh, have you seen?" It, it's the worst are, are zombie movies when people say this. Like, "Oh, have you seen you know X X movie?" And I'm like, "No, oh, it's great, it's a zombie movie." I'm like, "Well, you know, there's a lot of zombie movies." And they say, "Oh, no, 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 yeah. this one's about the people. It's not about the zombies. It's about the people." And I always reply, "Well, I can watch Kramer versus Kramer if I want to watch a movie about the people. Right? I want to watch a movie with the yeah. monsters." They've done so many, and it's just been flooded. You know, there, there is, you know, Kramer versus Kramer, you know, with zombies probably somewhere. There's <laughs> one about a guy trying to get his, you know, his auto shop, you know, running. Right. But there's a zombie apocalypse, and, <laughs> you know, there's, you know, they've done the love story zombie. I mean, I, I kind of stopped watching zombie films because it's just, they yeah. were just so flooded, you know, after Walking Dead. There's just an, 10 new ones every week i just you know and they're easy to do they're easy to they're easy to create uh well in a manner of speaking they're easy you know to do but and then so i think that some of the some of the stuff i've seen with the bigfoot had been not too far off from that they'd either cheat at the end um god i saw one where it ended up being i can't remember what the name of it was but me and harley watched it and it ended up just being um like some guys in Northern California who were trying to protect their weed grow. And that was Bigfoot County or country. Or yes. Something. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, that one wasn't great. No, I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, you gotta, you can't do that. I mean, ugh. that's, and that's the kind of cheat that I was kind of worried that this film would be, but it did not end up being that. But I, I do think it is a kind of a cross between exist and predator. That's the way I kind of see the film. And yeah, it exists was one of the better ones recently. Mm-hmm. I still think that that Boggy Creek remake is was fun and worth watching. They took a little twist on it, and I started watching that okay. years ago, and I didn't finish it, and I should. For some reason, I mean, it's you know, it's there's no nothing new in it, but I I, I enjoyed that one. I just thought it was competent, you know, filmmaking at least. Um, there's a kind of indie one that wasn't that great called Embedded that does have one amazing scene with a dog uh-huh. that I loved. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, it's uh, I, I'd have to go with Primal Rage as being the best one that I've seen in ages. It's definitely and very I good. Really was, I enjoyed it, and I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Well, and I, for me, it was, a, it was a decent horror film, but a better than average Bigfoot film. And yeah, I, I, I think that really hits it right on the head. I think totally, yeah. Right. And, and, and kind of to your point, when we started, too, I, I said this on the show before, and I made sure and let everybody know that's a compliment. I'm not just besmirching the movie. An, an average horror film, better average than Bigfoot film, is huge. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I really think you nail it there. I mean, it's not the greatest horror film movie, but it is a, a very good Bigfoot film. And as a horror film, it's not bad either. Right. I just thought it was fun. I thought it was fun, original, and it was definitely done by somebody who understands the basics of making movies and framing shots and pacing and editing and setting and lighting. Right. Which most of these movies just really lack. They just look terrible immediately. And this movie looked good. Right. Yeah. And from my point of view, also to your point is that it was created by a special effects artist. Uh, right. And it was a labor of love by him. It appears to be at least so right away, you're going to have at least a decent Bigfoot. And that's, that's where you got to start these movies you know, it's, it's impressive he he wrote it he directed it he created the creature and he played the bigfoot mm-hmm. as he's six foot eight yes he is i can confirm <laughs> so, this you know, you know. <laughs> he's, I, I met him he's tall he's a big fella 
<laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, to me, that's pretty neat. You know what I mean? I, I, I wish him the best. I look forward to seeing what he makes next. Right. Because um, I, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really good. I thought it was fun. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you do nail it. You know, it's 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 a, it's a better than average horror. It's definitely a better than average Bigfoot film. Right. And, and it's not a bad horror film. Well, I know I'm going but, to uh, I'm going to get you a copy of uh, Stomping Grounds, which is a movie that Harlan yeah, and I check that one out. yeah have uh, reviewed and watched, and our, our friend Teresa Tilly from uh, the original Evil Dead film uh, is in it. Is she plays the the mother of one of the characters, so she's in the beginning of it, uh, which is what got us to watch it. And to be honest with you, just like you were saying, it was hard for me to even start to watch because I'm like, oh God, and I'm just so. <laughs> I got a bad attitude about these movies because of what you said. They're horrible. They're all horrible, you know, and, and this one was good. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, you love them. You consider it kind of part of your job to watch them. Right. And there's that point where you just get flooded with so much material. That's just really bad. Yes. I mean, sure. Snow Beast is a bad movie, the made for TV one. But we remember as a kid. So we remember it a little more fondly. Yeah. And, you know, it's not a great movie. The thing doesn't look good, but there is some tension in this thing. You know, there's something to it. Right. Because, I mean, I can look at my book collection right here, and I just have a million movies that are just absolute, you know, unwatchable crap. You know, I mean, the sci fi channel Yeti comes to mind. I don't know if you ever saw that one. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried them all too. That's the one that it looks like a, a, a hairy mummy. Yeah, that for no particular reason can jump over mountains. <laughs> yeah. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah oh, I do. Yeah, I've tried them all. I've tried them all too. You know, myself. I mean, yeah. things like that really just kind of make you not want to watch any any other ones. There's another sci-fi one called Rage of the Yeti. You know, just they're just so bad. Right. So bad. But, you know, I, I say props out to this guy. Can, and I, I really enjoyed his film. And, and I, I do agree with you. And even when I met him, I didn't shower him with praise except for thanking him. I thanked him for making it because it's a decent Bigfoot movie. I didn't yeah. say it was the greatest thing I've ever seen or nothing like that. And I don't, I'm sure that's what everybody wants to hear. But I think that he's, uh, I think that that's way more of a compliment from people like us that are thirsting for a good Bigfoot movie than he might realize. The surprise that I felt at the enjoyment that I got from watching this film, I wasn't expecting anything. It stuck with me a lot longer. It's made me a lot happier than, say, the disappointment I felt when I saw Alien Covenant. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, let's put it that way. Yeah, you know I, agree. I, mean? I agree with that. Yeah. So it's like this. I was expecting nothing. And I really, really liked it. The other one, I was expecting the world. And it was just kind of disappointment. So if you put it in those terms, you know, right. It made you happy. Then there's got to be something good about it that you like. Well, and that's what I felt about Willow Creek. I, I really wanted it. I was I was interested in seeing it, but then it just kind of like I don't know. I don't I'm I'm kind of over the found footage stuff. I mean Cannibal Holocaust that was seventy nine. Yeah. You know, I mean that's it's, another thing yeah. that got done to death and yeah. no one will ever do it as I hate Blair Witch Project. I can't watch five seconds of that. I can't stand it. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as found footage goes, there's Cannibal Holocaust that did it first the best right. and it'll never be topped. You know, right. I, I hate it. Well, Mark, thanks for stopping by. Digitally, thank you for having me. <laughs> and uh, speaking uh, speaking about Primal Rage, and I know Harley, uh, this is a big week for us, our big 420 show, and we're glad to have you on to talk about it. And I'm sure we'll have you back on here soon. And hopefully, it'll be because there's another uh, good Bigfoot movie. I'd like to think there's another one coming down the line at some point. We hey, congratulations on the 420th episode, and thank you for having me back. Well, thank you very much, Mark. We'll talk to you soon. All right, take care, Tim. Okay, Mr. Ben Harley. Yeah, Mark Diamond. Mark Diamond from uh, yeah, the yeah dwarves. From dwarves. Yes, and uh, uh, so that I've says, been listening to some dwarves lately, Timo. Yeah, some dwarves. You know, I had jamming too. out that new. Uh, that new one's good. It is good. So, is, so is the new uh, Timo and Danny Hicks in Brain Invasion featuring Sierra and Baird. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I and thank you for that. But I, yeah. I, I do I listen to both of them I in believe, the car a lot. Actually, well, I believe the new what dwarves is to take back the night. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think yeah. it's really I, good. Yeah, real good. It, yeah, yeah, it's it is good, and I don't listen to. I don't really listen to music. And if I'm yeah. like working around the house or something like that, what I do is I listen to our show to check it before I put sure. it out. And um, so I have earbuds in and stuff. And if I, if the show gets done and I don't want to listen to nature sounds, <laughs> I, I always listen to, uh, I will actually, dwarves are a big thing. I listen to them a lot, at least once or twice a week. Yeah. They're probably the only band that I'm not involved in that I listen to once or twice a week. So, and that's, you know, 
enjoy it very much. So you need besides to pick the up... Burnt Reynolds project. <laughs> yeah, besides that one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh... I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. So pick up pick up the Dwarves records and thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, thank you, Mark. So we've uh, we have now let the world Godzilla. <laughs> yes, we have now let the world uh, in on our thoughts on Primal Rage and yeah, go check you know, it out. Yeah, seriously, seek it out, people. Right. It's it's well worth and and if you're a Bigfoot fan and a horror fan, man, it's like. You got reasons to support it either way. Yeah. Yeah. You've got reasons to support it either way. Yep. Exactly. So, and I, I would, we would uh, like to encourage people to rent or purchase. There's, it's on streaming DVD. Uh, You can rent by, uh, check it out. Check it out. Tim, all to tell you the truth. If Bigfoot, if I saw Bigfoot in fairness to the horror Bigfoot (laughs) movies, I don't care if I saw a Bigfoot with a bow and arrow (laughs) or if I saw a Bigfoot stand there with a, a flower I'm going to shit my pants either way. Get it? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm going to. Yep. I'm going to turn and run. Right. I don't care. So, you know what I mean? Because he could beat me, but didn't shove that flower up my wazoo. I don't know. Right. You know? So, and, exactly. and, yeah. and in, in contrast to that, if I was out in the woods and I saw that <laughs> leading lady out there in that wardrobe, Ooh. I would shit in my pants too and run, but that yeah. would be from embarrassment. Yes, yeah. Oh, she was a cutie. I think she was uh, Scarlett Johansson's younger sister. All right, let's. We're gonna stop there because I can't go any further. I can't. She was very, uh, wow, very wow. attractive. Okay, so Good Primal Rage. There, there we Primal go. Semi-official Rage. films. Semi-official. Yeah. Let's that get sounds to, like me. Let's get to, let's, get to, let's get to our official little films for this week, Mister Ben Harley. Yeah. Uh, we'll go. Let's see. Let's let's first off. Let's do from nineteen sixty-seven. We'll go, in, okay. we'll go backwards chronological. We're going from, back in time. Yeah, from 1967, we have the movie Theater of Death. Theater of Death. Yes. Yeah. Let me get you. Uh, let, me get, let me get to, let's see, movie guy movie out guy? here. Movie guy? Game out here. Get your storyline synopsis. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Welcome to the Theater of Death in Paris, Ooh. where a troop of young actors specialize in gore-drenched Grand Guignol. <laughs> plays directed by the cruel domineering <sighs> Philippe. Darvas, Christopher Lee. But when a series of horrific murders plague the city, the trail of bodies leads directly to the theater and its cast of the damned. Is the sinister Darvas responsible for the gruesome crimes? Or is the stage set for an even more ghastly surprise? It's an odd film. It's it's uh, yeah. it's kind of understated might not be... <sighs> It's definitely a theater horror film. Uh, yeah. Somewhere, I don't want to say fan of the opera because we're not really in that territory. Um, yeah. This is a, yes, Grand Guignol is exactly what yeah. it is. Uh, theater, gore, drudge theater. A lot of starts, I think it started in Paris okay. back in the day and stuff. So this is um, this is a story you know, about one of these theaters that, that did, you know, shock. Theater, Shock basically, theater. Yeah, 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 and um, before Alice Cooper, <laughs> right, right, and then uh, Christopher Lee plays a smarmy McSmarmington, really smarmy McSmarmington, yeah, uh, he does. director of uh, some of these shows and stuff, and um, you know, it's really odd because it has a well, lot he's to brilliant, do. Brilliant, Timo. He's just brilliant, though. <laughs> he is brilliant. I'm pretty sure yeah. he's wearing a hairpiece too. To be honest with you, yeah. it's kind of like looking at that awesome. going. But, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't think your hair rolls like that. But anyway, so <laughs> things I worry about while watching a movie, Mr. Benner. Yeah. Uh, but basically, there are murders about town, and Christopher Lee seems... Kind of Jack the Ripper style, uh, Kind right? of Jack the Ripper, yeah. yeah. And Christopher Lee seems to be kind of a nefarious hypnotist. Yeah. Let's put yeah. it that way. And he gets, uh, it's like, I think he gets some of his actors to act under hypnosis yeah to get a better oh, performance yeah. That's yeah. yeah to get a better performance out of them and stuff like this now um christopher lee is top build here but the real star of the movie is julian glover uh mm-hmm. who plays the good gary good guy harold handsome pants uh, yeah. i guess he's some kind of doctor himself i believe right he's some kind of yeah and uh he is known as uh well he's from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, but he is General Veers in Empire Strikes Back. Ah, yes. yes. So that's yeah. who he was. Now, my main criticism with this, it's kind of a convoluted mystery. Yeah. Um, kind of some curious and cool ways how how the kills are cleverly 
how they unfurl. Off. How, yeah, how they're pulled <laughs> yeah. off. How they're unfurled. Yeah. It's not, it's, yeah. I don't want to, and here's the other thing too. It's like, I'm thinking sob. I'm like, yeah, not really. But some of it is like people being killed, killing each other, not really knowing it. It's all like a trick, you know, like, like, yeah, yeah. Like they do, there was one with a girl who's like on the spinning wheel. Yes. And yeah. they have a, a Native American. He was an Indian back then. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You mean he rode in on a magic carpet? <laughs> yeah, I think his, yeah, I think his name was a lamb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was kind of jerking uh, off a lamp, like, hey, what's up there, yeah, lamp? Yeah, you like what? the curves. <laughs> yeah. What's up, lamp? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. Put some cream in my coffee. Uh, or yeah. <laughs> I've always been scared of the spinning wheel, Timo. Yeah, <laughs> don't blame you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, there's a guy behind the scenes, and he he does he uh, while well, the guy's throwing the the knives, kind of uh, he pulls a I don't know a lever, and then the girl gets gets it right in the throat. Isn't that That's two it. weeks in a row we've had this spinning yeah, wheel mishap? Like, actually, I think something with you. like that. Yeah. Wait, yeah, why, I feel why, blood, why sweat, and tears. Yeah. <laughs> I smell a blood. I smell a blood, sweat, and tears song coming on here. I think so. Spinning yeah, wheel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Am I mixing two movies up? I I, I, well, I you know what? Know. It's on a double feature, actually. That's, That's what right. a, yeah, uh, Anchor right, yeah. Bay double feature disc with uh, oh, Circus geez. of Horrors we did last week, and now we got Theater yeah. of Death. So, yeah, that, but it was very similar, like the spinning wheel. Yeah. You let, let me, Let's put it this way. I mean, I don't think you have to be a very sophisticated horror fan to understand if you have a, a spinning wheel in a movie that goes on for like yeah. three minutes, it ain't going <laughs> to end well. No, uh, uh-uh, no. End well, you know. No, I know in this one, there's the the girl. There's like two roommates, uh-huh. right? You know? Yeah. And then the one girl is like a younger one, and Christopher Lee's kind of uh, he's got eyes for her mm-hmm. because she has much more of the gift. He's the one that keeps hypnotizing. He hypnotizes her, and he's always like she's always going after her roommate during the those acting sessions or whatever yeah he wants yeah, he gets like yeah. scenes going like at a party or something yeah, and, he, and yeah. they're like real rough scenes and then he, he kind of hypnotizes a woman to be like mean yeah. to the other one but the other one's thinking she's really gonna hurt me yeah, you know and that's yeah. really a lot of the crux of the story like what's going on like why is she really yeah. gonna hurt her who's hypnotizing who what's going yeah. on you know kind of yeah so there's some weird tension between that because the one roommate is a little younger and christopher lee has her move in and there's a really bizarre scene between the other roommate and Christopher Lee while he goes over to her. She goes over to the house to like confront him. And yeah, he like kind of ah, he berates her and kicks her out of the troop or the acting <laughs> troop. Yeah, it's just, it's, yeah. there's, a, uh, there's some good drama in it. I said it's, it's a lot more drama than there is actual horror. There is some horror, but a lot of that is like a shadow on the wall of, you know, a guy stabbing a. a yeah. Uh, a bum, or right? Yeah, which, you know, yeah. or something. Which I got nothing against bums. I'm not trying to be like that, <laughs> right. you know. But <laughs> tell one come in my shop or anything. But <laughs> yeah, bitch, it's, yeah. Hey, no, I'm out here minding my own yeah. bum yeah. business. Come on, yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he's a bathroom damn it. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Have yeah. you seen the legend? Yeah, you're supposed to play <laughs> poker later. Um, <laughs> exactly. the, uh, yeah. Yeah, I kind of – this is a um, – it's not really a bad movie, but I like Circus of Horrors a lot more. I think this movie yeah, is a I little too, bit yeah. more – I don't know if it's trying to be something it's not. The blonde gal in this is, is to die for. I mean, she's pretty good. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. And no wonder Christopher Lee. I can't blame him on that one. Yeah. And, and it, she was a good little actress. Too, yeah. You know? And, the, and yeah. Uh, yeah, well, the actresses were pretty good because they were it, – it, it can't be easy – to be an actress or an actor in a film and then act like you're acting. Right. And then make right. and then and then make that different enough to where the audience knows that that character is acting. That's I've always been fascinated by that yeah. in movies. It's like, man, that's really difficult. Um, it would seem like it's really difficult. I don't know. Maybe they just have to act worse. I don't know for a little <laughs> bit and then come back out of it. Uh, yeah, so, but that can't yeah. be easy either. I mean, it's just not easy. No. To act. Acting's not easy anyway. People think no. it is until they get. If you think acting is easy, answer me this: Why is it that every time there's a camera stuck in your face, you do something goofy? Yeah, exactly. Because you're uncomfortable and you don't do so. Yeah. You go, hello. Are you or the big one? You stick your face right into it and look back. Yeah. Everybody does that because it's very disconcerting to have that camera on you. you yeah. Know? And in films, well, sometimes they're right get, on you. They're right on yeah. you sometimes. Yeah. Or get to a room full of people standing 
on the other side of the camera watching you mm -hmm. while you act or do your thing, your promos, whatever, right? Yeah. Come on yep. See, yeah, see how much you might sweat a little bit more or, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? It's just, right. yeah. Right. It's, so, it's a little bit different. You're right, though, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, it was, it's a well-made movie. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's, it's just not enough. There's this. There's not a, you know what? The thing is, too, I even said Julian Glover is really the star of this movie. There's not enough yeah. Christopher Lee in it. Because no, Christopher Lee really. is awful, like, he's awful imposing in this movie. He's a jerk. I mean, he's uh -huh. a, yeah. the other thing, too, he's a dick to them women. I don't know what the hell it oh, is yeah. with dicks and movies and women. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is with dicks and women. Okay, let me <laughs> let me rephrase that. I don't know what it is yeah, with jerks. Birds and bees, Tim. Yeah, okay, <laughs> like, we'll talk yeah. about that off air. So yeah. uh, I don't know what it is with jerk, jerks and women in these movies. But, I mean, I guess maybe because a lot of the movies were made by jerks. So they want to yeah. make themselves look good or, or they're kind or whatever. But, uh, right, right. Uh, you know, I can't really. I'm not really going to give it a great pay pop. I'm, gonna, I'm on the fence. I'm going to give it a. Eh. And the other thing, too, it's not real memorable. It's not a lot in it. No, there's no. things I like about decent movies that aren't memorable. A, I can go back and watch them again, and it's like the first <laughs> yeah. time all over again. Oh, yeah, I've never seen this. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> um, but it's it didn't really make me jump out of my seat. It was it, if sometimes when we watch these movies every week, they can feel like homework. Sure, yeah, this times, one felt yeah. a little bit like homework. You know, so. A little bit, yeah. yeah. This it just I mean it, I must give it. Just kind of a mild great tape up. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Uh -huh. um, I did like, I thought this, the acting was really good in this. I did like the story and the Harold Handsome Pants. Uh, I liked him in this. I wanted him to, to succeed too. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. go over there. And he was on it like, what are you doing over at Christopher Lee's house? You know, mm -hmm. stuff. He mm -hmm. was over there on it, you know, like, because. He, I don't think they were actually a couple. He was just, he was wooing her, Timo, I think. He mm -hmm. was trying to woo her. Mm -hmm. But he was looking out for her because he knew that how smarmy Christopher Lee was, especially after going to the, he went to the first acting session or whatever. It was mm -hmm. like, wait a second, this is, you know. And right. so uh, I actually must say I did root for him mm -hmm. in this film. So, and I usually don't uh, right. root for those guys too much because they're, yeah, they're, they're little, those guys are little jerkatins too, most right, of them. So, right, right. You know, so. Are you going to do a mild grape ape up? Yep, I'm doing mild, the, yep. mm, yeah, yeah. I can't even go that far up. Yeah. Uh, next up, Mr. Ben Harley, yeah. uh, last up this week from 1958. 58. We have uh, Blood of the Vampire? <laughs> yeah, Blood of uh, the Vampire. Blood of the yeah. Vampire? Right. Um, yeah. Okay. I here, thought there see. was a vampire. Yeah, There's supposed to be a vampire. Yeah. Here's uh, here's a little uh, little story summary for you. A little plot snaps. Right. A story summary. Okay. Whatever the hell you want to call it. Whatever here we it go. Is. All right. Yeah. Got a movie guy again. Here we go. Come on, movie guy. A man and his wife are terrorized by mad scientist Doctor Calistratus, who was executed but has returned to life with a heart transplant, along with his crippled assistant Carl. I've heard that before. Fucking oh, Carl. Yeah. The anemic mad scientist, believed to be a vampire, conducts blood deficiency research on the inmates of a prison hospital for the criminally insane to sustain his return to life. Okay. Yeah, I mean, pretty yeah, much. Um, that's pretty much it. If and you that's have about seen, it. <laughs> yes. Um, this is a... Almost exact same movie as Revenge of Frankenstein. Okay, here's the thing. Yeah. This is not a vampire movie. This is totally a Frankenstein movie. Yeah. If yeah, you I ask me, I mean, I'm yeah. sitting here watching this going, no, 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 no. This is all about reanimating dead people and, um, yeah, the 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 big lumbering henchman and you know, this is a lot of stuff. It's totally. And, and the guy had a nice eye. He yeah, liked the nice eyes. <laughs> he, yeah. Yeah. Googly he, eye he, sure did. Sure. he sure did. Um, the thing is, it's written by Jimmy Sangster who wrote for hammer and he wrote okay. revenge of Frankenstein about the same week. Oh, okay. I'm pretty is. sure he just took two scripts and said, oh, let's call this one Vampire. Yeah, I go here. And, um, because, from here, white out this. Let's right. Go with, yeah. <laughs> well, because Revenge of Frankenstein is a sequel to the original Hammer one where they think he was executed, but he ends up in a mental institution experimenting on the inmates. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. So it's the same story. And even Angio said, didn't we just watch this? Like, isn't it the same? And I'm like, <laughs> 
it's really close. It's yeah. really close to that movie. So she was correct about that. Um, All right, girl, Angie. Yes. Yeah, so again, it is a uh, basically a Frankenstein story driven by the archetypal deformed lab assistant play, played with yeah. panache by Jason Voorhees senior. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, oh man. He was yeah. a looker. He sure was. Uh, now we, the vampire yeah. supposed vampire. I didn't even see any fangs in this movie. I only there was one fang in this whole movie. Man. It really is like uh, this guy, this Dr. Calistratus. He, yeah, he, he's, Dead, buried in the, and Voorhees Senior digs him up. I think and then they, <laughs> he he forces some drunk doctor to do a heart transplant. Listen, Ben Harley, back in like the eighteen hundreds, if all you had to do is go to a pub and, and find a up, drunk like, yeah. doctor to do a heart transplant, we'd be much further along in, in oh, health yeah. technology. I think at this point, man, you know how many drunk guys I know down at the bar. Oh man, I can. Could... <laughs> Drunk what? doctors? Just remember, Harley, I know that, but in reality, let's just get rid of all the humor here. Do not let them give you a heart transplant, no matter how much no. they sweet talk you. Okay? Mm -mm. Let's just mm -mm. remember that. All right. So, again, it was written by uh, Jimmy Sangster, wrote for Hammer. He also wrote Curse of Frankenstein, which is, you know, okay. Um, and like I said, Revenge of Frankenstein, it's, it's the same movie. It's the same movie, yeah. except the very end. Uh, at the end of Revenge of Frankenstein, he's killed by a pack of wild inmates. Yeah. In this movie, if you remember the end of it, remember it's I was a dogs. I, I was telling you. You remember I told you about a movie I was watching. Oh, it had to been last year, and I said that's the most yeah. original ending to a vampire film. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, that, <laughs> that I have it, seen yeah. this not too long ago. Um, but this is sort of more of a medical vampire, and I'm yeah. being kind. Yeah. I'm being yeah. kind. So it's almost like a self-inflicted disease. Yeah. Uh, that this. Um, now, know. the one guy. Yeah. The one gentleman gets put in prison. The one doctor. Right. Yeah. But he, he's falsely in prison. But then he ends up being basically the assistant to the the vampire. The Archie Bunker va looking vampire. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Calistratus. Yeah. yeah. Calistratus. Yes. Now, it's funny because Calistratus, um, as the movie war on he become he became much more of a villain you know he right. was good i didn't mind him i mean even though we didn't see we saw one bat right timo well, there was a bat he, <laughs> one bat or did there was a bat at the end i know he did when he came out of the uh we had the one guy save him yeah after they had the drunk guy do the heart surgery he right turned into a, a bat and flew away yeah, that was weird wasn't it that was like yeah, a weird yeah. effect and that was Donald oh, it came out nowhere. It's like, oh, there it goes. Oh, it was like went. a cartoon or something, too. <laughs> yeah, it was very yeah. odd. Oh, it was painted. <laughs> yeah, it was very odd. Yeah, when it happened. Yeah. And that's that Donald Wolfett. The thing is, is like, he, me and Angel looked at each other. I was like, boy, you know, he could have been Bela Lugosi's stunt double. Yeah, because he looked a lot like him. He looked uh, like, at first I thought it was him. I'm like, no, oh, come on. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> you know, and, right, right. But like, because uh, this is. Doesn't happen often to me, but I said I didn't mind him as a character. He was okay, but right. when the when the the doctor that's in prison meets him, because basically he brings him to that prison to be his assistant. Mm -hmm. So when he first meets him, he walks in the room, and that doctor gets up out of the chair and looks at him. And I really, it's one of those where, you know, the three stooges, like, ah, 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 I think, you know, I'm like, ah, ah. Right. and he says something weird. And I was, seriously, I was so taken aback. I was laughing. I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, but I said he, be, as, as the movie wore on, he was much more of a menacing character. But right. at first glance, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoyed it. He, I, and I, I didn't mean to laugh, but I was like, holy God. Right. I, mean, I don't even know what he said, but. When he got out of the chair and looked back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, he was a mixture kind of uh, between, yeah, like maybe Bella Gossi stunt double and Grandpa from the Munsters, you know, <laughs> a little bit. A little bit, bit. Yeah. A little yeah. bit you know. Right. And so, but, yeah, um, I don't know, Tim, this movie, it's it's got some good, like, I mean, this could be a real good movie. Um, but it's just not, you know well, what I mean? It, it has the elements, but it doesn't have enough of the horror. And if you're going to show me a vampire, I need to see a couple fangs. And there was a couple plunging necklines. Not enough. You no, know, but it didn't but, have your girl Barbara Shelley in it. Oh yeah. 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 I like her. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. yeah. 
Yeah, so it was, I mean, and, and she was in Quatermass in the Pit, Village of the Damned, mm, stuff yeah. like that. So you do like, I mean, I I, I did say, I wonder if Ben, I wonder if he noticed the old yeah. Barbara Shelley was in there, because I think he liked her. But yeah, I it is like a British that. film, but it's not a Hammer film, but it feels so much like it. Because, again, if you watch this movie, Revenge of Frankenstein, back to back, you're going to kind of know what happened. I, I, right, I, right, yeah. Jimmy Sangster double dipped. He double dipped his, his story. Uh, it's a good story. But this is nowhere near as good as Re Revenge of Frankenstein. Um, and we just reviewed that not a hell of a long time ago, right? Right, yeah. It's about the same story. and But th this one just does not, it it doesn't hold, it doesn't look good. Um, no, uh -uh. It You can tell it's not Hammer. It, it's trying to be, but it, it like has half the budget of a Hammer film maybe, which is, yeah. ooh, you're getting a little low. Because Hammer movies were not high budget, so you're getting kind of low and... Lighting's not as good and stuff like that, but so it's kind of a poor imitation of it yeah. in a way. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm about the same way with this movie as I am with Theater of Death. I'm like, you know, it wasn't horrible. I just kind of am like, eh, and the there's nothing really to sink your teeth into. No, no, no. pun intended or nothing like that. But there's really <laughs> not. I mean, there really isn't. It's like vampire. I put a little question mark and pointed toward it in my yeah. notes. I'm mm -hmm. like, there's no vampire in this movie, you know? And it's like yeah. I said, maybe a medical vampire. But then again, if we would have called it a Frankenstein story, where's Frankenstein? Because right. he's not, that's not Dr. Frankenstein, you know? No. I mean, uh -huh. and the only creature in either one of these movies this week <laughs> was Voorhees yeah. Sr. Was, was the... <laughs> <laughs> was Gary Googly Eye. <laughs> yeah. He was a handsome devil boy, I tell you. He sure was. He, he sure oh, was. Uh, he did. He drove the whole damn story somehow, you know. So, yeah, but, he did. Uh, I'm going to give this uh, one another. Eh, yeah, I don't know. It's, I can't. I really don't want to poop on either of these movies because it's not like they're, they're the worst things I've ever seen. They're terrible. No. Mm -hmm. They weren't that entertaining. They didn't really, yeah, that's the thing. They don't they hold just up. They're just kind of like, yeah, <laughs> they're there. And it's like they are a, they are in the, uh, the deep Amazon of my collection. Let's yeah, put it that way. Yeah. They're there because yeah. I'm a collector. They're not really there because I, yeah, yeah. I couldn't wait to get them. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> oh, so. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. bet you couldn't wait to get this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Blood of the Vampire is streaming on, um, Amazon Prime. I believe it's actually two different versions of it streaming on Amazon Prime. Uh, Theater of okay. Death is, at least was, on an Anchor Bay double feature with uh, Circuits of Horrors we did last week. So yeah, that is how we saw them. And uh, Ben Harley, uh, that's about it. That's what we got. So we got. What do you got? Well, what do we, what are you going to give Blood of the Vampire? What do you? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's an awful movie. Like awful. You, you fluttering lips. I, fluttering and it wasn't lips bad. It's not like it was like bad acting. It just was boring. A little boring. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, oh, I think both you know, being suffered. vampires too, and kiss my butt in the first place. And then, <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, I, I mean, know. they're both, I think they both suffered from that. You know, a little bit too. So, but yeah, uh, yeah. Well, Ben, let's get out of here. Uh, thank you for joining us for our 420 week. We'd like to thank Mr. Mark Diamond again for sitting in with us and chatting a little bit about Primal Rage and hope uh, uh, everybody checks that out. And uh, thanks for talking a little Bigfoot with us too yeah. and everything. So uh, thanks, Mark Diamond and. And, and everybody else. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on next week, Mr. Ben Harley, but it's going to be post 420. <laughs> so whatever the hell that means. So. It'll be 421. Bro. <laughs> right, exactly. So, uh, so until next week, Mr. Ben Harley, stay spooky and we'll talk to you then. Keep it creepy, people. You've been listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show, brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com, your affordable one stop solution to all your screen printing needs. <laughs>